Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of March. Now March, we're going to have all kinds of forward momentum. It'll feel like the year is starting actually. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that, well, as per numerology, we are running a number seven year. So the year started off gradually, a bit slowly, a bit quietly, but we're gonna have in March, a number one personal month. So new beginnings, fire, ignition, off we go, energy. You know, it, it's gonna feel like there's more energy. And I've been doing 2023 outlooks for a lot of you out there. And for some of you in your uh, reading, I have noted that for some of you in particular, March is gonna be the month where it really starts to get going again. But even when we take a look at the planets for March, We've got a lot of the faster moving planets will be will have moved past Saturn. So we're going to start to feel their energy more now as well. So from both Vedic astrology and Vedic numerology, we can see that March is really the month where things are going to start to move forward. This month, the news match up, I've got quite a few items to talk about. So yeah, it is going to be a big month, I do believe. Uh, but, and I'm also matching up things that have happened already, but there's, there's quite a bit to talk about. I'm also going to take a look at the energy for March, where we'll have a look at the main astrological movements. And then I'm going to take you through your sign, the little mini reports for every single sign. You will be able to click below and just jump into your sign straight away. So if you want to stick around for the news matchup and the energy for March, you're very welcome. Otherwise, I will see you in your mini reading. And also, I just want to welcome the new subscribers. Thank you for joining this beautiful community. It is growing and, you know, uh, it's so much fun to do this work. It wouldn't be what it is without you. So thank you so much for subscribing, for watching, for liking, for commenting. All those of you who are new, you're going to find that this is a really wonderful community of people who are kind and supportive in the comments below. I've seen so many of you, you help each other out and so many of you offer insights, theories, astrological theories, you know, you ask great questions. So thank you. And I, I apologize, I've been a little bit distant lately. I haven't been posting as much on YouTube and I have been very busy. I haven't been doing comments and things like that. Now, one of the reasons for that is I have been very busy with readings. So thank you to all of those of you who have booked sessions. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing all the readings. I have got many readings booked up as well. I think um, even through to April, I think there's maybe one or two spots left in March. But thank you everyone who has booked and I will be changing location soon. So this will be the last video from this location from this room and you'll see that the location will change the next time I post uh, it will be back to what it was say for example in 2018 2019 those of you who have been watching for a very long time you know exactly where I'm going I'm going back to London I will be uh, you know it'll be the dark room with the single lamp you know that that scene I'll be back there so stick around for that you're going to see the scene change but why don't we get stuck into the news in brief let's see what's been going on so <clears throat> we do have some massive news actually we've got uh the earthquake in turkey 6th of feb that has been absolutely huge and as i was thinking about this i was looking at the transit wheel and i was trying to see all right what is it that caused this earthquake can we see that and as I looked, you know, I wasn't hugely inspired by what's here to be able to, and I could cobble together a theory or two, but there isn't particularly anything here in the sidereal Vedic system anyway that shows me that there would be an earthquake. What I'd really want to see is I'd want to see some very striking or strong major planetary energy in fixed earth, and that would be in Taurus. And if you watch Western astrologers, they have been talking about earthquakes. They have been saying that there's definitely going to be earthquakes. Why? Because Uranus is in Taurus and Taurus is fixed earth. <clears throat> so that makes perfect sense. 
In the Western astrology system, they have a theory. They have astrology to support the earthquake. Uh, when I take a look at this, I mean, I could look at Pluto in Capricorn. That is kind of of interest to me. I am definitely looking at the outer planets. I'm looking at Uranus, Uranus and Rahu. And one of the things that I see there and one of the things that I saw there, and I'm going to check this. I'm actually going to go back to my Rahu in Aries video whenever I launch that. But I'm pretty sure I would have talked about the possibility of fires. And I can see fires, that there could be sudden changes and the fire element could be playing up or more active, you know, across the next well, however long Rahu is in uh, Aries, which is which is going to be there until I think November of this year. So definitely fires suddenly happening. I can see that. But, you know, if I look at this chart, I can see Mars in Taurus here. Uh, but that doesn't and Mars is the Lord of Aries where we've got Rahu and Uranus. So I could cobble together a little bit of a theory <clears throat> if I have to, but nothing in this chart makes me think earthquake. All right, so that is uh, something that I will say there that I would not have seen it coming or been able to predict it. And that is quite interesting because I was chatting with a friend of mine who is Turkish. And oh, by the way, any, any one of you out there who is Turkish from Turkey connected with the country, my heart goes out to you and sending love and healing energy your way into the region. Honestly, this is just so, the loss is devastating. It's colossal. I, I really feel for, for that part of the world. I spoke to a friend of mine who is Turkish and he told me that he believes there could be something else going on. <clears throat> and what he said, is that he, he did mention things like geoengineering and harp and things like that. What I'll do is in the description below, I will leave a link to a video about geoengineering. It's on YouTube, you know, people are talking about that. So I will provide a link and you can take a look and just see what's going on there. To me, that sounded like, you know, a, a possible explanation as to what is going on. Because I really, as I say, through my system, I can't particularly see anything that that indicates earthquake or that, you know, supports an earthquake. One of you on the channel, uh, you're so kind, you did mention that you had a theory and it was based on the moon's movement and things like that. My argument there would be that the moon's movement you know, the moon goes through those houses every month. So, you know, we can't really use the moon uh, to predict an earthquake or anything like that. We really do want to see the outer planets having a major impact. And yeah, as I say, nothing particularly inspires me here in terms of uh, indicating an earthquake. Western astrologers, though, they've got Uranus in fixed Earth Taurus, and they have been talking about earthquakes for months, like for a long, long time. So, you know, they've, they've got a theory that can that can support the, the earthquake there. But when I look at this, I don't particularly see one. And then I have a good friend of mine who is Turkish who told me he doesn't think it's got anything to do with the stars. He really does think that there's some geoengineering influence that has caused uh, this massive thing. So I'll put a link to that video below. I'm just going to make a note to myself too because I watched that video today and I thought that was a good one. Now when we do look at the outer planets, Uranus and Rahu are together in Aries and I'm pretty sure and I do need to go back and check this video when I talked about Rahu moving into Aries. I feel like I might have said that there could be sudden fires or fires could happen uh, here and there and I've been looking at the news and there have been sudden fires going on and there have been kind of these corporate warfare scenarios where you know people are burning factories down to the ground and I've heard about tech factories being burnt to the ground and things like that but uh, the one that interests me quite a lot is egg factories and chicken factories have 
been burnt to the ground definitely across America and uh, even in New Zealand as well. So this is really very concerning and again I'm going to leave another link below to a video by and I'm pretty sure his name is Neil McCoy Ward if I've got that right. I hope I've got his name right. I'll put it on the screen by my side in case I have that wrong but definitely check out his video about what's going on with eggs and chickens across America. It's really fascinating because I believe for the last three months uh, of the end of 2020, something like that, chickens stopped laying eggs across America and people were able to figure out that it's to do with the feed. So they were purchasing feed for their chickens and it seems like their food has been engineered. So I mean we're talking about geoengineering, there's food engineering going on and it caused the chickens to stop laying eggs. And this has been so terrible, but people are wonderful. Look at the Aquarian energy that has stepped in here. You know, Aquarius steps in end of January. People are talking to each other. People are sharing information and people have figured out it's the feed. They've started feeding their chickens homemade food, home food, and the chickens are laying eggs again. So, you know, I mean, there are outside forces that are really trying, really, really trying to put obstacles in the way, in the growth of, you know, in front of the growth of humanity. They're trying everything. Now they're trying to stop us from eating eggs. Isn't that crazy? And eggs are so healthy. They're so good. I'm pretty sure even Yogananda um, encouraged, there was someone around him who I think wasn't well, and he said, well, you must eat eggs to build yourself back up again. I do eat eggs. I, you know, I, I'm largely vegetarian. Uh, in the last, I don't know, month or so, I have started eating a little bit of meat again because I'm going to have to travel. And I have tried vegetarian and vegan meals on flights and things like that. And it just, I don't know, it doesn't work for me. I just run out of energy. So I have, yeah, I think I will be eating meat again a little bit. But eggs, I certainly do eat because I need protein and um, it's a really healthy source of protein as well. So it's really interesting how, you know, something out there is, is trying to stop us from eating what's nutritious and good, right? It's just terrible. Uh, let's take a look at other news items we've got here. War in Ukraine. I've got here war in Ukraine looks set to continue. Mars is going to enter air sign Gemini. So there could be airstrikes across the month of March um, and possibly, you know, a bit further than March. Uh, I've got the note here. Tension could be ratcheting up to the time when Saturn opposes Mars in July. And I'm pretty sure I made the prediction that July could be really tense. But I've got here end of July, early August, when Venus goes retrograde, that could be the astrological event that might break the tension or even, even break the war or, or things really stop or, or, or slow down after that. But it's kind of like there's a crescendo or there's, there's activity that builds up but then it, it drops off and I'm kind of seeing that end of July, early August. I did see some kind of headline of some guy in a military outfit saying that the war is not on, but I'm not sure about that. I, that was some kind of mainstream thing. I really don't know. I, I'm, I'm not uh, following this in any great detail, but I am looking astrologically. And um, I've also got the note here, Mercury, the Lord of where Mars is going to be. So Mars is going to enter Gemini, but Mercury, who is the Lord, will be debilitated from 16th March to 30th March. So there could be like a lacking of logic or intelligence at this time, which could impact the war. M Mercury is our logic. It's our intelligence. It's very practical as well. So there's something about Mercury being debilitated from 16th March to 30th March, which might not be very good. There is also a Parivartana exchange happening between Mars and Mercury across April. Uh, and Uranus is in the same house as Mercury. So airstrikes could be sudden, 
it could be without warning as well so that is one of the things i'm seeing there and then the other item of news i wanted to bring up was in relation to saturn being in aquarius I had said that when Saturn is in Aquarius, we should see the lifting of rules. We should see, you know, so Saturn in Capricorn is rules, 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 and leaders are just going crazy <laughs> implementing rules, right? But Saturn in Aquarius is where the rules are lifted or taken off. Uh, and we are beginning to see that. So I've got the note here, people will be able to travel more freely. Now I've got here, the US is soon to pass a bill to allow unvaccinated tourists to visit America. I read an article about this. Again, this was based on the information that my friend from Turkey, he and his wife, they always update me with what's going on. And because I sometimes don't know. And they told me because my I was under the impression that, oh, wow, I wouldn't be able to visit America because, you know, um, unvaccinated people can't go. But they said to me, no, no, if you wanted to go there, you can. They're going to lift all the restrictions. I was blown away. So I did a Google search. I looked it up and it turns out that they are not they're not lifting the restrictions just yet. I think they have to pass this bill, but there is an intention to do so. I also had a look from this same website. There's an article that says Singapore has actually removed their restrictions as of 13th Feb 2022. Again, I then Google searched, okay, could I go to Singapore if I want to? And uh, it turns out that I think the Singapore embassy still has the rules in place. So be very, very careful if you're traveling. Uh, don't take my word for it because the information I have here could be incorrect. Um, definitely check before booking. But what I am seeing is some signs, some movement, some change that, you know, people will be able to fly again, you know, uh, move through the world and do what, what we used to do. And, and, and that's one of the reasons normally I used to go through Singapore. I used to, when I'd go home to London or from London here home to Sydney, I have two homes. Um, I would, you know, always do a, a stop in Singapore and, and you know, relax a night or two, eat food, do normal things. Um, but yeah, now I am not planning on, on doing any stops now because, I, you know, I don't know where I would be able to go. But it looks like things are starting to normalize on that front, which is so good. So, so good. All right, let's take a look at the energy for March. So uh, I've got the note here. We'll have the feeling of forward momentum finally this month, if you have been waiting for that. Some of you have had a busy start to the year. Okay, so it's not for everybody, but some of you will have had a slow start to the year. Don't you worry. This is the month where things will start to move. Um, yeah, we've had the faster moving planets behind Saturn the whole time, and they're now going beyond uh, Saturn, which is which is great. We're, we're going to get the feeling of those faster moving planets now. From the 3rd of March onwards, uh, yes, that's when we're going to have those faster moving planets going past Saturn. So that's good. Now on the 13th of March, Mars steps into Gemini. So this is an important shift of energy here. Uh, on a personal note, how is this going to impact us? Well, this is great practical energy to get lots of things done. Okay, we should have some energy, uh, some momentum here. I've got the note, great time to be hands-on, to be technical, to build things, to do things, to achieve things. Now's that kind of time. From 16th March to 30th March, Mercury is debilitated. So for each of us individually, this is actually a wonderful thing. I love it when Mercury is debilitated because you know, our mind, our logic, our concentration power is, is just a little bit reduced. And that's a good thing, right? It's a great thing for spiritual people. It's a great thing for artists, anyone who uses their imagination or any of that, you know, this is a wonderful time uh, as I've got written here for art. Logic can get in the way of heart-based exploration and communication. Yeah. Who needs the mind, right? <laughs> you know, it's always good to, um, to use the heart, to be in the heart space more. So important. So, so important. Well, guys, I think we are just about ready to start with the mini readings. So I'm going to have a look at the time. We're doing good on time. Uh, those of you who would like to stick around for the mini readings, you're very welcome. And we will start with Aries. 
Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. So on the 7th of March we have a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. I love Purva Falguni Nakshatra. It's all about reward. It's all about and it is a bit of a material nakshatra as well. You're allowed to enjoy the beautiful things of life here. So this is a time for you to enjoy the fruits of the past, of past labors, right? So for you, this is in relation to your children or it's in relation to your creativity. So there's something about enjoying the fullness of these areas. And it is a time to treat yourself if you want to buy something for, and this would be great for your children, or if you want to buy new art supplies or another canvas or more beads for your jewelry collection or whatever it is right it's a good time to indulge in that sort of thing now at the start of the month mercury is in your 11th house and mercury is really in a mood for networking and you know possibly socializing as well but definitely networking also business opportunities uh, setting up new income streams. Mercury can be doing all that kind of thing while in the 11th house. So that's up until 16th March. Now 16th March onwards, Mercury will enter Pisces. So this is Pisces, your 12th house. This is a really great time to exercise your imagination. It's a great time for any artists out there. Um, also a great time to make a note of the downloads the insights that come your way you know when you're out and about and you're doing something totally different and this often happens when you're relaxed doesn't it and it often happens for me it happens in the shower i'm in the shower and then like you know i get these ideas and things like that so but also it can be definitely when i'm walking or something like that i get ideas come and this is when i'm relaxed and i'm not thinking of work and all these ideas come so you'll definitely want to have a notepad and pen or something like that to jot down your ideas. Now Mars enters your third house from 13th March onwards. This is a great time to put effort into your career. Uh, you know, ideas that you present at this time will be very well received. So definitely if there's a project you want to start, if there's something you want to present, if there's something you want to get off the ground, this is a really good time for that. It's also a great time to switch jobs or to apply for a new job. If you're looking for work or any of that, you're going to have some energy here to be able to do that. Now on the 21st of March, there is a new moon in Pisces Uttrabhadra Pada Nakshatra in your 12th house. So this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations in your thinking to be removed. And I'm pretty sure we've got Jupiter in the house as well. So we can include beliefs here. So if there are any limiting beliefs that you know are holding you back, wish for those to be removed. And it's very likely that this new moon could make sure that, you know, those things don't hold you back anymore. You will outgrow, uh, you know, those, any, any limitations that are in your mind. Aries, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. Now on the 7th of March, we have a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra in your fourth house. This is a beautiful full moon to enjoy the comforts of home. All right, so you can cook up a big, beautiful meal. You can enjoy time with your family. Uh, you know, it's a material moon, right? It's a material nakshatra. So buy something, treat yourself to something new, maybe for your home. Maybe there's something you want to buy just to make your home look brighter or more beautiful or be more comfortable any of that that's a wonderful thing to do now at the start of the month mercury is in your 10th house and is in a mood for work mercury wants to excel at work you know this is, this is great for success mercury in the 10th is superb mercury is great at presenting ideas thinking talking you know is often loved by seniors and things like that so this is good energy in your 10th house right up until 16th march then 16th March, 
Mercury will enter Pisces in your 11th house. So this is a great time for networking and this is Pisces. So, you know, Mercury is in this. So this is a great time for thinking outside the box. It's a great time for innovating, using your imagination at work, not doing things by the status quo. You know, this, this could be really creative, uh, a creative time at work for you. Mars enters your second house from 13th March onwards. So your spending might go up. Um, you might, and, and if the spending doesn't go up, there'll, there'll be something about you where you want to be more in control of money. Okay, because this is like uh, second house, Mars. Mars is very much about control as well. So there'll be something about you wanting to be more in control of money. I've got the note here, be careful of how you speak with family members. Um, this could be a time of, you know, you're more in a rush or you could be a, come off a bit aggressive or things like that. So just take it easy, go slow. Uh, and if your energy dips, this could be why. Okay, Mars in the second can be a little bit physically tiring because it's coming up to the ascendant there. Now on the 21st of March, there's a new moon in Pisces, Uttrabhadran, Padanakshatra in your 11th house. So this is a really powerful time to wish for anything you want. Okay, so if there's anything at all, the 11th house can be a bit of a wild card uh, house. That's how I see it because every single planet that goes through the 11th house is delighted to be there. There is not a single planet that doesn't like being in the 11th house. So that's why it's a kind of anything you want type of house, right? Because everybody's happy in there. So you get to wish for anything you want on this new moon. And a good thing to wish for because it's Purvabhadra Pad, no, Uttrabhadra Pad, my apologies. Gosh, I hope I've been saying the right thing this whole time. I only did Aries, it's fine. Um, the, we've got Uttrabhadra Pad here. So you can wish for limitations to be removed. Okay, that is a really good thing to wish for. So if you need some guidance or inspiration as to, well, what do I wish for? You know, because when you're given a blank slate and you can do anything, sometimes it's difficult. So I would say wish for any limitations in your life, especially limitations that block you from growth, uh, growing financially, any limitations that are blocking you from getting what you want. Wish for those to be removed at this time because we've got a new moon here, you can wish for anything, you can plant a seed. So that would be a good one to wish for. Taurus, I'm liking the look of this month for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 7th of March, we have a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra in your third house. So this is a beautiful full moon to enjoy the company of your friends. Okay, if you're feeling social, go out, enjoy yourself. This is a really, really lovely full moon. So, uh, and especially if you've got someone special in your life or, or someone on your mind, it's a really great time to express the fullness of your feelings to that person. Now, at the start of the month, we've got Mercury in your ninth house. And this Mercury is getting you ready to succeed at work. It's a really good time to skill up. It's a really good time to learn new skills. If there's a skill that you think is going to help you perform better at work, this is a good time to, you know, devote some time to learning, sharpening up your skills, getting smarter, all of that. Mercury will enter Pisces your 10th house from 16th March onwards. So that is really going to be the time to shine when it comes to work. For the first half of that month, you're really just getting ready. And then, you know, you're going to shine at work 16th March onwards. And especially if you use your imagination and you think outside the box, that's going to be amazing for you. Now, Mars enters your first house from 13th March onwards. Physically, you might feel a little bit drained or tired at times. Um, this could even be energizing for some of you. It just, it just depends. But uh, for a lot of people, Mars, you know, transiting through the first house, it can be a little bit tiresome. So see how this makes you feel. I've got the note here, it's not the best month to start a business. So if you can put that off, or if there's some new venture or something like that, maybe you might want to put that off for a bit. This might not be the month to do it. 
This is a good month to keep a check on spending and finances. Okay, and you'll also want to be careful how you speak to family relations, like uh, especially your mother, things like that, but, but your family members, be careful how you speak with them because Mars can be a bit aggressive or can be a bit in a rush sometimes. So um, you might want to slow down and, you know, not be in a rush. Now, 21st March, there's a new moon in Pisces, Uttrabhadrapada Nakshatra in your 10th house. So this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations in your career to be removed. If you felt held back career-wise, see if you can work out what those limitations are, wish for those to be removed and then let it go. Let the memory of that go. And if it repeats, if it revisits you, you will notice that it should be diminished. Okay, it won't be as strong. And you're on it now. Your awareness is on it. You, you see the limitation. So it'll all start to diminish because deep awareness is really what heals. So the fact that you're on the case is amazing, Gemini. I wish you well. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Cancer ascendant cancer moon or cancer sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology right what have we got going on cancer well on the 7th of march we've got a full moon in leo purva falguni nakshatra happening in your second house this is a beautiful full moon and it's a really good time to enjoy time with your family okay spend time with people you love spend time doing things that you love. It's a great time to cook up a big meal, uh, treat yourself, pamper yourself. If there's something expensive that you want to buy and if Saturn believes it's okay and you're not gonna put it on the credit card and all that, go and buy it, go and treat yourself. Do something beautiful for yourself or buy yourself something beautiful. Prova Falguni is the fruits, okay? And it's a very material nakshatra. You can enjoy stuff right? You can, you're allowed, you're allowed to enjoy beautiful things. So do that. Now at the start of the month, Mercury is in your eighth house and is putting your finances in order. Okay. This is good. Mercury in the eighth house is very good. Uh, so Mercury then enters Pisces in your ninth house from 16th March onwards. Now Mercury in the ninth, this is a really good time to study. Uh, and to study something that's going to help you excel in your career. So this is a time to add more strings to your bow and all that kind of thing. What, what is it that you can learn that you know that's really going to make a difference in your day-to-day -day career? And it could be some tech thing. It could be, you know, learning how to, I don't know, for me it was learning how to use that iPad. I'm still learning, but it's amazing. And it's, it cut hours from my um, editing time. I used to spend hours and hours editing and now if I draw the things on the screen, oh my gosh, so easy. So yeah, that's helped a lot. So what is the one thing you could do that would help your career? That If you learn that, what would that be? See if you can do that on 16th March onwards. Now Mars enters your 12th house from the 13th of March onwards. So this is one where you want to be careful of accumulating either debt um, and or weight gain. Now the weight gain thing, that might apply to some of you, but it might not. Uh, but you know, one of the things I have seen is that Mars-Jupiter combination it can create either debt for a person or it can create weight, weight gain on, on a person's body um, and or weight gain, right? So that, that is something I have seen. Uh, now you might feel restless, Mars in the 12th. You can feel restless. Could be time for a short little getaway, but if you're traveling, take extra care. All right, so um, that's, that's for some of you, if, if it applies, if it makes sense to do a short getaway. That, that could be something you might want to do. It's just that Mars energy in the 12th could be just a little bit, a little bit restless there. Now the 21st of March, there is a new moon, Pisces Uttrabhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. So this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations, any limitations that have impacted you feeling like in, you're in charge of your life. Okay, so do you feel like you're fully in charge of your life? And you might say, no, I don't. And 
If you're answering no, there are some limitations. There's something that's limiting you. There's something where you don't feel in charge of your life. You don't feel like you can just go for it. There's something like that. And this could be tapping into confidence because ninth house is opposite the third house of confidence. This could be around confidence, but what are the limitations that are preventing you from feeling, do you know what, I'm in charge? What, what are those limitations? Now, you can wish for those to be removed here on the 21st of March with this new moon. New moon energy, you can wish for something, you can plant a seed. And because you know we've got the beautiful nakshatra system, that's where I get the inspiration for these you know, little concepts where I'm saying you can wish for limitations to be removed around your sense of feeling in charge of your life. So I get that from the nakshatra. I mean, you could really wish for anything you want on a new moon, but I tend to think we have the nakshatra system. Let's wish for something specific. So yeah, if, if you want to, uh, this, this new moon time is a time to, and you could be reflecting on, you know, your own sense of authority. Do you feel like you're in command of your own life? You could just reflect on it. And in the reflecting of that, uh, you know, some things might shift and change. You'll be amazed at how little it takes. Just a little bit of awareness can change our whole lives. Well, Cancer, I'm liking the look of this month for you, uh, especially with that, that full moon there in the second house. That's really beautiful. So thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Leo Ascendant. Leo moon or Leo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. On the 7th of March, we've got a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your first house. So this is a time for you, Leo, this is your full moon. This is a time for you to enjoy some well-deserved rest and relaxation. How do you want to just chill out and do nothing? Would you like to just chill out and do nothing? This is the time to do it. This is your full moon. Uh, there's, there's got to be something on this day of you enjoying the fruits of past labors. You know, it's, it's very much okay to indulge on this day. If there's been something you've been saving up for, maybe it's time to go out and buy it. Because Purva Falguni is a material nakshatra. Purva Falguni is the nakshatra where you are to be rewarded and, you know, enjoy material life. So definitely do that. Uh, but equally, it could just be rest and relaxation. It could be a day where you're reflecting because we've got a full moon here. So something's coming to culmination. And maybe, you know, you're able to put your feet up and see that you've completed some really big cycles. What are those cycles? What can you celebrate on this day? Now, at the start of the month, Mercury is in your seventh house and is keeping you logical and practical in love. Right, Mercury in the seventh house. Mercury in the seventh house. Another thing about Mercury in the seventh house is these people will remember everything you say to them. Right, so if you know, they will remember every single thing that their sweetheart says to them, which is sweet and very romantic, but can be annoying for the partner because you know you won't win in an argument with Mercury in the seventh. Right, so um, Mercury will enter your eighth house from 16th March onwards. So that's actually 16th March onwards is a really good time for you to get your finances in order. Okay, and it is nice for love as well. Uh, you know, continuing that love vibe that we got going from the seventh there. But um, yeah, 16th March onwards, good time for you to be financially focused or getting your finances in order. Perhaps there's some admin you need to do that you've been putting off that is around money, right? It's a good time to do that 16th of March onwards. Now, Mars enters your 11th house from the 13th of March onwards. So this is an excellent time for your career. This is beautiful, Leo. This is a really great time for you. Great time for networking, great time for you to put yourself out there, win new clients, you know, present ideas, be seen, succeed, be rewarded. Uh, a really, really great time, okay, Mars from 13th March onwards. And I do believe, I think Mars is gonna be there for some time. So good on you, Leo. Some great energy there for you. Now, uh, you're one of the lucky three, right? The lucky three signs that gets this good run. So 21st March, there's a new moon happening in Pisces Uttrabhadrapada Nakshatra. 
in your eighth house. So this is a powerful time for you to wish for any limitations on your marriage or within your marriage, okay? If there's something you just feel there's something not quite right or there's something limiting the love or something that, you know, um, that is, is making the relationship difficult, you can wish for that to be removed. And also any limitation in relation to in-laws. Maybe you've got a difficult relationship with mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law, brother-in-law, whatever it is. It could be some difficult relationship there. You can just wish for that to be healed. And at this time, you know, there's that beautiful new moon energy. Something can be renewed there. Equally, if you're into your awareness work, perhaps there will be a deep awareness or realization with you, within you, about those relationships. And that is going to be the thing that just breaks the pattern or breaks the problem. Leo, I'm liking the look of March for you. I think it's going to be a very good month ahead. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, now on the 7th of March, we have a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your 12th house. So this is a really great full moon to recognize how far you have come spiritually. I love this kind of new moon, especially full moon. Sorry, I'm saying the wrong thing. Apologies. By the way, in the comments below, sometimes I do get very nice people who just tell me, hey, you said the wrong thing. I do that quite a bit. Um, <laughs> it's because there's too many of these things. But yeah, no, this is a full moon and this is a beautiful full moon. I love this kind of full moon here in the 12th house where you get to recognize just how far you've come spiritually. And I like to do this because I like to look back and, you know, in my early 20s, and I think I was always a bit spiritual, you know, even in my childhood. And, you know, I've always been a bit spiritual and connected and all that kind of thing but like there are things that uh you know I've matured and I've grown and definitely when I compare myself to my teenage years oh gosh like that is just that's gross because I remember thank goodness I've totally trashed some of those dear diary things that I used to keep in my teenage years because they were terrible I was so unevolved but like this is this is a good time to recognize that you know oh thank goodness I'm on the spiritual path, number one. And number two, wow, I've grown. And it's so important we do that now and then on these full moons to appreciate the growth that we've done because, you know, when we're on the spiritual path, we can be very hard on ourselves and we're always looking for growth and we're always seeing that it's very slow and incremental and it doesn't happen easily or it takes time. And, Sometimes that can be demotivating because we're not seeing the results. Also, this is very abstract stuff that we do here. So it, it's so abstract and it's hard to see the progress. So it's very good every now and then periodically to stop and appreciate, hey, I've grown. It's a really, it's just a good day to do that, 7th of March. Yeah, I've got the note here. Look back at who you were 10 years ago and see how much you have grown and treat yourself. Treat yourself to something, you know, celebrate this growth. Even if it's just you and your higher self, you know, that's fine. That's great. That's ideal. So yeah, I'm liking the start of the month for you here. Now let's have a look at Mercury. So at the start of the month, from a Mercury point of view, we've got Mercury in your sixth house and Mercury is very career focused at this time. Mercury enters Pisces enters your seventh house from 16th March onwards. So the first half of the month, you're very career focused. Second half of the month onwards, you are, you know, you're a bit more logical and practical in your relationships. And a Mercury in the seventh house person is, you know, their love language is probably words. And, you know, and they probably are quite practical. So take care in, in your relationship. Um, with your partner, but equally, it could be it, you might just observe that it's a time where you're a little bit more head over the heart, you know, um, at that time. Uh, that could be a thing. Now, Mars enters your 10th house from 13th March onwards. This is an excellent time for your career. You're going to have energy to do more projects, to take on more responsibility. You will want to be a little bit humble with superiors though, okay? Mars in the 10th 
um, can be quite strong, can be quite aggressive, go-getter, achiever, that kind of thing, which is good. But like if you've got bosses above you, just take care. Um, and you, Mars is going to boost your career now until the end of June. You've got sensational Mars energy. Okay, so when it comes to career, uh, this is a really good time to devote yourself to your work, to commit, to succeed, you know, and to save some money. Maybe if you're a self-employed person, you can take your foot off the accelerator um, a bit after June, maybe something like that. But this, we've got really good energy here, Virgo. Now, on the 21st of March, there is a new moon in Pisces, Uttarabhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your seventh house. So this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations on any of your relationships to be removed. Okay, if you're finding, and especially a relationship with your partner or the person you're married to, uh, you, you know, the person you're in love with, whatever it is, any limitations on your heart, any limitations in relationships, and this is any relationship because it's the seventh house of the other. So this is all kinds of relationships. This is business partnerships as well, your clients. This is quite a lot of relationships in here. So any limitations, wish for those to be removed and you know let the planets do the rest the other thing is that on the 21st of march you can just reflect on what the limitations are and through deep awareness of the limitations very often that is just enough to break the pattern forever so virgo i'm liking the look of all of this for you you've got really nice energy here i'm wishing you well especially that mars energy it's beautiful all right we are now going to welcome libra Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. On the 7th of March, we have a full moon in Leo, Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So this is a beautiful full moon to enjoy time out with friends, okay? Or those people that you consider your soul tribe. You know, those people that you nominate as your soul sister or soul brother. This is a really good time to spend time with them. Uh, and it's also a really great time to buy something beautiful. Okay, I've been encouraging that a lot. This is a very materialistic sort of an episode today, but that's because Purva Falguni is a bit of a materialistic nakshatra. You know, it is that part of the uh, nakshatra system where we stop and we enjoy the fruits of our labor and we enjoy material things and we treat ourselves right so it is a time to celebrate it is a time to enjoy life so definitely do that on the 7th of march now at the start of the month mercury is in your fifth house and is money focused okay so mercury might be focused on your investments, focused on expenses, noticing how many more expenses there are, that kind of thing. Equally, Mercury could be quite focused on your children as well. Um, but then Mercury enters Pisces and moves into your sixth house from 16th March onwards. So that will be a time where you've got you know, Mercury there in that career focused house. It's a good time to make progress in career and definitely a time from a Mercury perspective to bring imagination into your career. You know, how can you think outside the box? How can you innovate? How can you use your imagination more in your career in order to succeed? Now Mars enters your ninth house from the 13th of March onwards. So definitely be careful of run-ins with authority. Uh, or how you speak with your father. Maybe your relationship with your father will be more impacted at this time. Uh, you know, definitely take care with that. We've got Mars here, which can be quite aggressive. So, you know, you might want to just factor that in. You might also want to factor in that sort of Mars aggressive rush type energy when it comes to siblings or cousins as well. Uh, you are getting ready for career success from May onwards. Okay, Mars will then enter your 10th house. But until then, Mars is in the 9th. So you can keep Mars busy with learning new things. If there are things that you need to learn that will support your career or that will support your future growth, this is a really good time to train up in something now. Uh, you know, you might want to be quite hands-on about it. And I recently got an iPad and I can tell you that that has just, 
inspired me so much and it does it makes me hands-on like with my stuff and sometimes I need like a tech gadget or a tech gimmick or something like that to encourage me in my work or inspire me in my work so this could be Mars likes that kind of thing Mars likes tech and um, yeah this could be you buying some new bit of tech isn't it uh, you know but I can tell you having a new gadget or something like that to organize yourself or to you know and I've got all my pdfs and my astrology books and all that on my kindle I'm just loving it so yeah that could be something that you uh, get into there you know 13th March onwards is possible now on the 21st of March we have a new moon in Pisces Uttarabhadrapada nakshatra happening in your sixth house so this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations on your career to be removed Okay, and this could be a time where you wish for that. We have a new moon where you plant a seed and new things happen. But equally, this could be on the 21st of March, just a day where you reflect on this. You reflect on what are my limitations in my career. And just on the deep awareness of what those limitations are, that can be enough for you to just recognize it in a deep, soulful way. And it, it can break forever because through deep awareness, we do heal a lot of things. So Libra, I'm liking the look of this month for you. I'm especially loving the look of, uh, yeah, Mercury's going to be in your sixth house. That's, that's great energy right there. Mercury loves to transit the sixth. All right, now we are going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now on the 7th of March, we have got a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your 10th house. So what you might find at this time is a project at work could be completing at this time. So look out for that. The other thing that you can do if there isn't particularly a project that's or a cycle that's completing at this time, um, it would be really good for you to look back a few years ago or however many years ago you need to go to see that career-wise you have grown a lot okay this is actually a time of celebration okay this full moon is about celebrating the achievements what have you achieved at work what have you done it's really good every now and then to reflect on the progress that you have made because that in itself is a very motivating activity um, I'll give you an example. The other day I was walking in something like 30 degree heat uh, up this really steep hill which is over that way and I was on my way to catch a bus and anyway I'm walking up this giant hill and midway up the hill I decided to just stop and look around and I looked and I could see how far I'd come and I could see well that actually wasn't too bad and it wasn't you know um, it was quite easy and then I walked up the rest of the hill but that little turnaround and look down the mountain and I felt good, it was just what I needed to take me straight to the top. Like I, some, every now and then you just need to stop and reflect. And that's what this uh, Purva Falguni Nakshatra is all about. This is a, a, you know, a point, a point where we get to, sorry, there's just a little bug there and I'm just clearing the way. A point where you get to stop, you get to rest, you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor, you get to, you know, uh, stop and reflect. This is a really good time to do that. All right, now at the start of the month, I wonder what the omen is of that little bug because it was just very still above my laptop. That's interesting. If anything comes to mind, if anything comes to you in, in the comments below, let me know. There's a little bug that was just stationary above my laptop. Anyway, at the start of the month, Mercury is in your fourth house and is focused on your expenses. Uh, if you're a student, it'll be very focused on studies. So you might have some beautiful energy here to concentrate uh, and get a lot of things done. Equally, it could be that Mercury is focused on expenses. Um, in the fourth house, Mercury can even be quite innovative about uh, bringing in new income streams and things like that. That is a possibility here too. But then on the 16th of March onwards, Mercury will enter Pisces in your fifth house, um, which is actually really good for any artists. Okay, we've got Mercury 
you know, in Pisces, you're going to be particularly imaginative at this time. So uh, it's also brilliant for time with children as well. You'll really enjoy time with kids at that time, 16th March onwards. Now Mars enters your eighth house from the 13th of March onwards. So if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling drained, uh, you might need to take a break, especially if you have been working really hard. And of course, you've got that full moon completing some work thing in your 10th house. So even from a Mars perspective, it's really making sense for you to take a break from work if you can. Or it is that thing of looking down the mountain, seeing, all right, well, I've actually covered quite a bit of ground here. And that can be very motivating on the next part of the journey up. But yeah, you might actually want to take a little break if, if that makes sense. I know it's early in the year, but for some of you, if you've been work, 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 working like for a whole year steadily, some of you have been really busy. So this could be a time to take a break. Got the note here, could be a good time for a short getaway with family, but take care if you do decide to do that. Um, take care both in your travels, also with how you speak to your family members as well. So it could be, sometimes Mars in the 8th can be a little bit of a pressure cooker environment. Uh, you know, you, you might feel sort of a bit cabin fever as well. So yeah, it's the kind of thing where you and your partner just disappear for a bit or something like that. 21st March, there is a new moon, Pisces, Uttra, Bhadra, Padra, Nakshatra happening in your 5th house. So this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations on your creativity to be removed. Yeah, because it's happening in the fifth house there. And it, it's often the case where, you know, sometimes we want to be creative, but it's like, we've got, we, I have this all the time. Oh, I wanna make a master's video, but oh, I can't because I have to do this, this, and this. But really, if I just got more organized, you know, I probably do have the time. So there are some kind of, and I have these, yeah, like the, the limitations in my mind that don't bear any resemblance really to reality. It's like, well, what is holding me back? Nothing. You know, I've got enough time. It's that kind of thing, right? So um, yeah, what are these phantom limitations that are in our minds? Like, because we procrastinate as well, don't we? So that 21st March new moon, Pisces, Uttra, Bhadra, Padra, Nakshatra, fifth house. Either you're making a wish that, you know, planting a seed, plant a seed that all the limitations that block my creativity, I want those to be removed. So you'd be making that wish, or you could actually actively be reflecting on the 21st of March uh, about your creativity and what limitations do I have? And as you deeply reflect, you have that deep awareness on the limitations that are holding you back, that can be enough to break it, okay? So Scorpio, I'm liking the look of the month of March for you. Take care. We are now gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 7th of March, there is a full moon in Leo, Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. Okay, so this is a time to really recognize how much more control you have over your own life than you had before. So how are you more empowered than you were, say, for example, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, however long you need to go back, right? Look at the difference and you will see that you have grown a lot. And I've got the note here, be grateful for all the times where you were able to take on a leadership role. What was it that you did where you stepped in and you took a leadership role in life? This is a day really to celebrate that, okay? So celebrate the times where you were really empowered, where you felt in charge of your own life, of, you know, not in an ego way, in a sort of, um, you know, because everyone's been given a little bit of God creator power, right? How have you been using yours? This is the time to think about that. Now at the start of the month, Mercury is in your third house uh, and is, is feeling social or focused on networking or focused on social media as well. This could be quite a social media type thing 
where you are communicating, your networking, your social, this kind of thing. Now Mercury then enters Pisces in your fourth house from the 16th of March onwards. So this is a really good time to focus on new work opportunities, possibly the creation of new income streams, that sort of thing. Uh, for students, it's a really good time. If you're studying, you might feel that you've got quite a bit of concentration power at that time. I just want to check one thing. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Good for students, definitely. So if you're studying something, you should be in, in quite the mood to concentrate and get a lot done. Now Mars enters your seventh house from the 13th of March onwards. So definitely take care of how you speak with your partner or the person that you're committed to. And this is great energy if you are self-employed actually, because Mars in Kendra position, Mars is a great industrialist. Mars can achieve a lot, can do a lot. So um, if you're a self-employed person, you could really get a lot done and achieve a lot. Now, one thing to note is that expenses could run higher and this uh, Mars in the seventh house could also put a little bit of pressure on your health as well. If you're tired, if you're drained, don't overdo it, <laughs> okay? Definitely don't overdo it. And I always need that reminder myself. I always need to tell myself, because when I have a lot of great health, I'm like, yay, and then I do way too much work and I burn out. So this is my lifelong habit. I have to learn how to be more balanced and not burn out. So yes, definitely don't burn out. If you're starting to feel I'm a bit tired, take a break. Don't overdo it. Now on the 21st of March, there is a new moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your fourth house. So this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations concerning your home or your home life to be removed. If there are any limiting factors, and that is something just to reflect on and meditate on. So, you know, either you're making a wish with the new moon energy, we can plant a seed, we can get a new cycle going, but equally, just with some deep awareness there on the 21st of March, deep awareness into, okay, well, what are the limitations regarding my home or my home life or how I perceive where I live, you know, um, some deep awareness on those limitations could be enough to break the limitations altogether. But I'm liking the look of this month for you, Sagittarius. Uh, you've got some really nice, nice energy in here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. On the 7th of March, we have a full moon in Leo, Purva Falguni Nakshatra, happening in your 8th house. So this is a time to celebrate the fullness of your family relationships, all right, especially your relationship with the person you're married to or in a committed relationship with. Definitely a time to, to celebrate all of that. And if you are, let's say you're single, well, what is family to you, you know? And I, and I know what it is, yes, to, to, to live on my own. And, and when family can be like the people in your community, you know, um, your neighbors can become family as well. You know, there's all kinds of people, your coworkers can become family. So, you know, I realize that not everyone may have family around them. And, but yeah, there will be some uh, you know, concept of family. And this is really a time on the 7th of March where you can feel the fullness of something connected in with your family there. Now at the start of the month, Mercury is in your second house and is really help, helping your speech actually. Uh, you know, now Mercury in the second house is a great speaker. And they often make great lecturers and things like that. There's a real thing of Mercury in the second being so sparkling and dazzling with, with how they speak, right? So this is great for impressing work clients, all that kind of thing. So that's at the start of the month up until about the 16th of March onwards. Now 16th of March, Mercury enters Pisces in your third house. So that's kind of a continuation really of the communication theme. Uh, it's a good time to present ideas at work. It's a really good time to expand your networking circles, you know, to be client facing, to be seen, to be heard. This is a really good time for all of that Capricorn. Now Mars enters your sixth house from 13th March onwards. 
So this is excellent energy for winning new clients. I love this for you, Capricorn. Great energy for winning new clients, great energy for winning legal cases. Um, you will have energy for work. You'll have energy to do things, to achieve a lot, to get things done. Now, if it has been a slow start to the year, this is really the time where you're gonna get going, okay? 13th March onwards, there are no excuses. It's go time, okay? Um, now, on the 21st of March, there is a new moon, Pisces, Uttra, Bhadra, Pada, Nakshatra, happening in your third house. So this is a powerful time to wish for any limitations on your confidence to be removed, okay? If, if there's something that's holding you back, and sometimes the things that are holding us back, sometimes we're just not aware of them. We're not aware of some of the limiting beliefs or the things to do with our confidence. Um, you know, sometimes these things are so abstract and they're really hard to see actually. But if on the 21st of March you reflect on what these limitations could be and you just start exploring them, through the deep awareness of the limitations, these things might break, all right? So that can be some soul homework there for the 21st of March. But Capricorn, I'm loving the look of the energy that you've got going on. You've got terrific energy here, especially both Mercury and Mars are really stunning for you in this instance. So I hope you enjoy the month ahead. And we are now gonna welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 7th of March, we have a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your seventh house. So this is a time to celebrate the fullness of relationship with your partner, the one that you're committed to, the one that you're married to. Yeah, it's a time to recognize as well how you've matured as a lover, as a partner. And you don't need a partner to do that one, okay? So that one everybody can do. So definitely, you know, we, we can all look and see how we've matured as a potential partner. Even if, if you're single, you've come to a state now where you know that there are certain things you wouldn't do. You wouldn't do those things again. You don't need to. You've played those games. You've done those things. You don't need to be tested in those ways, right? So appreciate that you have grown, okay? It's really important we do that now and then on our path because it's motivating. It's motivating to look back and to see that we've made progress because that's the one thing that will inspire you to make more progress going forward, right? So there's always more mountain to climb, but it's very good now and then to just stop and look and see, well, I've actually done some things, you know, it's important we do that. This is a, really a time on the 7th of March for you to recognize your heart and your compassion and how much that has grown. Now at the start of the month, Mercury is in your first house and this is great for organizing your life. Okay, so is life admin, money admin, all kinds of admin, whatever it is you need to get organized about, it's a good time for you to get organized. So to be doing that up until the 16th of March, then the 16th of March onwards, we've got Mercury entering Pisces in your second house. So your speech is gonna be quite sparkling and dazzling. So, you know, it'll be a good time for you to be, uh, you know, speaking, speaking up more at work, presenting things. You know, Mercury in the second house makes a great lecturer they're great at speaking, great at talking. So yeah, definitely enjoy that. Now Mars enters your fifth house from the 13th of March onwards. So this is really good energy for your creative projects. You will have energy for your creative projects. Um, good energy for spending time with children, but be mindful not to rush your children or put pressure on your children or be aggressive with them or any of that. Because we want Mars in the fifth. Mars in the fifth can be a little bit aggressive sometimes with children or forget that they're children, you know. So um, there's that. There's also the person you're dating. If you're dating, if you're, you know, you, you, yeah, there's, there's someone on your scene, that kind of thing, um, just be careful not to be uh, harsh or aggressive with them. Now on the 21st of March, there's a new moon happening in Pisces, Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra in your second house. So this is a really powerful time to wish for any limitations on your finances to be removed. 
Okay, if there's anything that's blocking your financial growth, or it's been hard for you to save money, or um, which I know Aquarius, I think it was for you in the last Saturn transit, I think it was hard for you to save money, but that should have improved by now. But um, this is really a time for you to wish for any limitations on your finances to be removed. And that can be your own limiting beliefs, your own ideas about money, what those are. You might want those beliefs to be removed and then you will be able to earn a lot more or save a lot more. And if you're not wishing for that on the 21st of March, the new moon, new moon, we've got a seed, you can plant a seed, you can wish for something. You could also just reflect on this. Uh, you can reflect on the limitations in a deep way and the deep awareness will be enough to break those patterns. But I'm liking the look of the month for you, Aquarius. I'm especially liking the look of, well, you know, Mercury in the first house. It is, it is good to get organized, isn't it? Be practical, be logical, get organized. And then, of course, Mercury in the second is great for speaking and things like that. So, yeah, it's looking like a good month ahead, Aquarius. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Pisces Ascendant. Pisces moon or Pisces sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 7th of March we have a full moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your sixth house. So this is a time to celebrate the fullness of your work and your service to the world. This is a time to look at what you have achieved in your working life so far and it's really important and really good to look back and to see that, wow, you know, if I compare myself where I am now to where I was 10 years ago or 20 years ago or however long it is, it's really good every now and then to stop and reflect and to acknowledge how far you've come and to acknowledge that you've grown, you've achieved a lot, you know, and you're in the place that you once wished that you were maybe right so um, that is often a good thing to reflect on as well to recognize that wow I'm in the place now that 10 or 20 years ago I wished I would be you know and I, I don't know how far you back you have to go to find that previous you you know but every now and then it's just good to acknowledge that wow I've come some way and I've gone some way up the mountain you know, because there's always a lot more mountain to climb, but it's good every now and then just to appreciate the view from where you are, okay? So definitely do that on the 7th of March. Now, at the start of the month, Mercury is in your 12th house and is potentially getting downloads, insights, creative ideas. This is definitely a time where you want to have uh, a little journal where you not note down what's coming in. I sometimes get that happen with me and yes I've got pen and paper typically on hand uh, and it doesn't work. I've tried the whole audio into my iPhone thing that doesn't work. That's not so good. I have tried that. No uh, there's something about pen and paper. I don't know what it is. Gotta have it right. So um, now that's for the start of the month. You've got Mercury sort of the antenna reaching beyond the veil, pulling ideas for all of us to enjoy. All right, so you're very creative, imaginative, able to get ideas. Uh, but then on 16th of March onwards, the energy will shift a little bit. Mercury will enter Pisces in your first house. So this is actually a really great time to be practical, to get organized, um, to sort out all manner of life related admin. But this is of course Mercury in, in Pisces so and that's you isn't it Pisces so it's like that thing of getting ideas that, that can continue even when Mercury's in the first house there so you might be getting a lot of ideas at this time. Now Mars enters your fourth house from 13th March onwards not the best time to move okay so if you need to move house or any of that um, if you are moving house and you're now worried about that please don't worry because all you have to do is just build in more buffer time and recognize that there could be some higher expenses here or there uh, but build in buffer time so that it saves you from the extra expenses or the extra stress you can move at this time but if you can put it off that's great now there is energy for home related projects. Mars likes to do something. <clears throat> Mars is in the 
fourth house there so this could be a time to you know do some of those house related projects that require a lot of energy sure this this could be a good time for that just take extra care if you're doing any you know DIY or uh, building type work and I've got the note here be extra careful how you speak with family members especially your mother now on the 21st of March we have got a new moon in Pisces Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra <clears throat> happening in your first house so this is a powerful time this is your new moon wow it's a really powerful time for you Pisces this is a time for you to wish for any limitations that hold you back in life wish for those to be removed once and for all okay so this is your new moon and new moons are times where we plant seeds we start new cycles you know we set things off into motion but as part of that seed planting thing you can wish for something and and because we've got Uttra Bhadrapada here and Uttra Bhadrapada does contain some limitations here that's why I'm saying wish for any limitations that hold you back to be removed it's just a good time to do that equally if you're not wishing for it perhaps you're just reflecting very deeply on what are the limitations that hold you back in life are they emotional are they spiritual are they physical are they practical what what are the limitations that hold you back and reflect deeply on those and it's through that deep awareness and this is on the 21st of March you're reflecting deeply and through the deep awareness that is enough to break the pattern that is very often all it takes to break a pattern to break a cycle you know and <clears throat> healing and doing spiritual work healing spiritual work all these things it's it's a uh, it's natural easy and free I always tell my clients that right healing is natural easy and free it's the ego that will complicate it and that will convince you that you need several years in therapy or whatever it is no sometimes you don't actually you know um, sometimes just some powerful deep awareness is all that you need and very often that powerful deep awareness is a suspension of the mind right so it's beautiful that we've got uh, you know mercury debilitated around the time of this new moon because you will be able to do that deep awareness that I've been talking about here with each sign but Pisces and anyone who's watched the entire episode I want to thank you so much for being here I want to thank all of the viewers who have ever watched this channel I'm just having a look oh look at that the time is about to cut out I'll let it cut out and then I'll start the thingy again because I do want to as I was saying I do want to sign off properly this time because I, I, think, I think I will take a little bit of time to sign off here just a little bit just a little bit of a moment because I'm saying goodbye to this room I'm saying goodbye to three years of my life here gosh how amazing and I've loved doing these episodes here from this room it has been so wonderful I didn't know I'd be coming back to Sydney Australia some of you have sometimes asked me your business is .co.uk and yet you're in Sydney Australia and some sometimes people they think this room is London it's not <laughs> it is Sydney Australia that's where I am I grew up here guys so I might as well tell the story at the end of the video when probably there aren't that many people here watching but at least it's recorded so I grew up here I was born and raised uh, here in Sydney Australia this is my home and in 2004 I moved to London and I loved it I just couldn't get enough of the place I was amazed I yeah I, I adore that part of the world it suits me really well and I have been living there yeah since 2004 but in 20 end of 2019 uh, I woke up but I think it was 2020 actually where I found the, the extraordinary problem in my uh, body I had these oh it was it was horrible I had these kind of lumps I was very sick very very sick so it's not the the, the flu that was going around it wasn't that no no it was something far worse I was I was extremely sick and I packed a bag and I left I left London I didn't know uh, when I'd be coming back or going back or anything I didn't know anything 
I just knew I had to get back home to the family house to heal and, and to recover. And I've been doing that since the start of 2020. And yeah, I'm just kind of looking at the, the screen there and I'm looking at this room and I'm going to be leaving this room. I've been here for three years, as I said, doing these reports. I, for the first half of 2020, I just slept for most of it. I was just healing. I would do a lot of Kabbalpati breathing, a lot of, um, you know, and I healed. I healed naturally, guys. I healed uh, drug-free, surgery-free, everything free. I did not touch a thing. I, I healed naturally. A lot of, um, you know, boiled turmeric and black pepper tea and a lot of Kabbalpati breathing. What else did I do? I did homeopathy. I did... Uh, iodine supplements I did uh, what else all sorts of things basically you name it I did it if it was natural I did it I also had a miraculous healing um, with some some healers in India as well that was done via zoom I did everything I could do and I've totally healed completely and I've healed to the point that I'm now healthy and uh, able to to pack this place up I've got a bunch of tarot cards by my side whole whole bunch of them here i've got to put them in boxes and um you know this this room is, is very small it has it features a desk it features a, a cupboard with a few of my things in there and that little section over there sometimes when i'm on the phone with my friends in bali when i'm on zoom with my friends in bali i've shown them the room sometimes and i've had like laundry hanging off <laughs> like that um that lamp over there and there's like a just a small like single bed over there and so this is my home office here I have done now so many readings from this room as well it has been a sincere joy to do readings for every single person who has booked I love this work so much I just want to keep doing it and yeah join me in the next uh, episode where I will be on another continent you know I'll be in another place and that's home too you know I'll be back home with my astrology books many of them I've missed uh, my little piano and whatever other things I've got in there I, they're all still there I'm sure they are but um, yeah this has been amazing and, and this whole activity would be nothing without you so whoever you are who are watching this right now and the only the very special people are left now it's just the, some of the Pisceans and maybe some of the people who watch the whole thing but uh, only a few are left at this late portion of the video you know thank you with all my heart for, for being yeah, part of this incredible path that is unfolding here for all of us and um, you know I, I will be back I will be back doing pick a card as well I know I've been very absent uh, and I haven't been posting but I hope to post a lot more content I hope to do lots more readings and I hope to grow astrologically and spiritually and share all the the growth that that happens uh, you know and and thank you for, for being being a part of my life so yeah well well over and out I will see you in another place and and my usual sign off I look forward to seeing you next time